Good morning, and welcome to the historic Lindsley Avenue Church of Christ message. And um, this message is particularly special to me because it represents the last uh, message that I will bring for the Lindsley Avenue Church as minister in that official capacity. And um, I want to begin by thanking the church for your trust in me and for your support and encouragement uh, over these eight years that um, I have served as a minister of the church there. It has been an immense honor and joy for me to be able to serve and and everyone there has uh, become family to me and so I want to begin by just saying how much I love each of you and even though this marks some type of an end uh, I hope that it also is a beginning to a new engagement for me with the church there and that I can begin to uh, serve in a different capacity as requested and as needed and so I am always a friend of Lindsley Avenue and in my heart of hearts always the minister and so I will be diligently praying in the time to come for this church for the work the valuable work that it does uh, in the community, the downtown community. And so just know that my heart and my prayers stay with you as uh, I begin a new journey in the town of Fayetteville, Tennessee. So I want to begin with a word of prayer and uh, also want to talk to you about some of my favorite memories at Lindsley Avenue and then also a few words of encouragement. Father, change is something that happens uh, to us in this life. There are seasons, there are times, and to every season there is a purpose given under heaven. And Father, you are part of that orchestration. You are sovereign God of the universe. And Father, we trust in you for the change of this season, knowing that you are unchanging that we hold to your unchanging hand, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we trust in you and in your unchanging nature. Father, I pray uh, for the Lindsley Avenue Church of Christ, for every member, for every friend, for every visitor, for every person who calls that haven home. Lord, we pray in the coming months uh, that you will help and guide and direct able ministers to the call of Lindsley Avenue. And I pray that you give the church wisdom as they begin to choose a new minister. And Father, I just pray that um, I can continue to serve in a way that is helpful to the church and encouraging. And Father, we pray for your help in that regard. We continue to pray for uh, our nation and for this world, for this pandemic. And we pray for safety. We pray for healing. We pray for your will. Lord, bless us. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. So I wanted to start out by just kind of telling a few interesting stories. Of course, there are so many stories with Lindsley Avenue that touch my heart and so many people uh, that have entered my life uh, through the Lindsley Avenue family. And um, so I'm very grateful for that. And I, and I don't mean to just focus on certain aspects of my ministry there, but these in some ways are a little bit lighthearted in some ways, but they also reveal kind of the heart of Lindsley Avenue. And so I want to begin by telling about uh, a wedding, a baptism, 
and an incidence of benevolence. And uh, so all of these things uh, will help us to understand the Lindsley Avenue Church. You know, Lindsley Avenue is known for the inclusive nature of the church. I mean, if you walk in to a worship service, you're going to see all types of people from all different walks of life and backgrounds. There is truly a diversity of people at the Lindsley Avenue Church of Christ, both as members and in, in the general assembly. And I think that uh, if any church represented the church with the open door, it would certainly be Lindsley Avenue. It is an inclusive, beautiful church who is trying to serve everyone in the community. And that uh, touched my heart when I came to Lindsley Avenue some 10 years ago and, and saw the uh, diversity that was there. And uh, it encouraged me because some have said, you know, the, the worship hour on Sunday morning is the most segregated hour in the United States. Uh, but that is certainly not true of Lindsley Avenue. But I want to tell you this story about the inclusivity of Lindsley Avenue because it was about a wedding. And Robbie got a call about uh, a group desiring to have a wedding. We really don't have a lot of weddings at Lindsley Avenue. It's, it's not typical. I know in the past there have been lots of weddings there and I've heard lots of reports of folks getting married at Lindsley Avenue. But Robbie gave me a call and she says, hey, there's a, there's a couple who are wanting to get married and, and they need someone. And it's an interesting thing that she said. She said that, hey, they um, are first and second uh, generation immigrants and uh, they're from the East and their ethnicity and they want to have an American wedding. And so this is their way of kind of integrating and assimilating into American culture. They want a typical American wedding and they came to us and so can you do it laws and so i'm like well sure but to make sure you tell them that this is a christian wedding because i don't do any other kind uh, this is going to be a christian wedding and we're happy to support them and this may be even an opportunity for us to uh, share the gospel and in fact i gave away a bible that day that we had the wedding and uh, so we scheduled it and Robbie uh, scheduled it and she was uh, immediately the wedding planner which may be no shock to any of you out there uh, and so we had uh, uh, a full house and it was um, basically entirely of this ethnicity from the East and there was it was completely another group of people it was, the bride was beautiful the groom was handsome it was sad and then we had all of this american music that was going on and robbie was uh, kind of directing uh, the wedding and i was up on stage and they walked down the aisle and, and all the customary kind of american wedding things and uh, so we're in the midst of the wedding i'm giving my uh, wedding speech and it's going okay. I look out into the audience and it seems that most of it's lost in translation. So I'm trying to get through this wedding to get to the magic moment to where we have a kiss and where I can pronounce them husband and wife. And so finally I, I suffer through it and everybody else suffers through the wedding and I get to that magic moment. And I say, all right, by the power that's vested in me, by the state of Tennessee, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. And he said, I'm not going to kiss her in front of everybody. And so it was American all the way up to the kiss. And then the kiss didn't happen, but we pronounced them husband and wife. And everybody applauded, and uh, we had a good time afterwards. So that was one unique time and uh, very unique to Lindsley Avenue, but just speaks to the 
uh, attempts that we have always made to serve and to include as many people as possible and uh, even if they don't kiss the bride. And so that was one of the unique times at a wedding. And uh, another time that I remember was a baptism. And this wasn't too long ago. Of course, it was when Brother Andrew was baptized. And we rejoiced that day. He says, I think I'm going to get baptized. And we had a full house. And uh, a lot of Andrew's family was there. And so we were grateful to see his family, and and then it came time for the invitation, and Brother Andrew walked down, and we were all proud and joyous and happy, and then we go to uh, the baptistry, and we start taking off the top, and we look down in the baptistry, and it's probably just under our knees, and on top of that, there's a heater to give warm water, which most of the time it's not warm, but uh, this time it was scalding hot because there was only so much water in it. And uh, so I'm looking at Andrew, he's looking at me. I start looking at Jeff because he's back there, he's always serving. But uh, I say, Jeff, what's going on here? And Jeff says, this is the way you want it, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, and all I can think of is that John the Baptist, he went and he baptized where there was much water, it says in the scriptures. And here I am, uh, barely to my knees, and how am I going to dunk uh, tall Andrew into this water and, and successfully totally immerse him in front of everybody? And uh, so it was going to take some time, and we decided to announce to the audience that we were going to have to take some measures to fill up the baptistry and to cool it down because it was so hot. And so the amazing thing was is that most of the crowd stayed and uh, waited until we filled up that baptistry. And then, of course, uh, Jeff and Thurl were dumping large amounts of ice into the baptistry, and it was just melting <laughs> as we were uh, trying to cool it down. So... Um, we could baptize Brother Andrew successfully, and uh, but we did. And on that day, uh, the Lord whispered into the church's ear, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, becoming a child of God, born again, re sins remitted, forgiven, gift of the Holy Spirit, that beautiful, beautiful act of baptism, of act of surrender, uh, happened and we rejoiced even though we had to work a little harder that day to do it and so um, we also assigned Andrew to be on the uh, baptistry committee that day to make sure it was prepared I think is how we ended it and so a wedding a baptism and lastly we had a benevolent uh, situation this was several years ago when Frank was our song leader and uh, we had uh, one of our uh, homeless gentlemen come up needing a bus ticket and what he wanted he wanted to return home and he needed a bus ticket and so uh, a few of the men and I met with him afterwards and got his situation and um, prayed with him and decided it would be good to, to buy him a bus ticket. And so I volunteered to take him down to, to the bus and, and to get the ticket because we didn't want to hand off cash. Um, we wanted to get the bus ticket and make sure that he uh, got on it and all that good stuff. But, you know, anytime after church, um, most people are, are kind of wanting to get uh, to lunch. And... And that was no exceptional day. I think everybody afterwards were, was kind of hungry. You always hear people's stomachs kind of growling after service. And uh, so I volunteered to go, and I thought everybody had dispersed. So I took this gentleman down to the bus station because it's, it's less than a block away, really. And uh, 
used it as a chance to try to encourage him and to pray with him and uh, bought his ticket and, and said goodbye. And then I went outside and I looked over and there was Frank on stakeout. He was watching me to make sure I was okay. And Frank was 80 years old, great song leader, and he had my back. And really, that speaks to who the Lindsley Avenue Church is. Not just Frank, but a church that's always looking out for each other. That is so special. So I've been blessed to have times that are funny and weddings and baptisms and in benevolence, but also in knowing some incredible human beings who love the Lord and who love the church. So I want to encourage you today to remember the church carries the gospel. There's nothing more important than the gospel of Christ. The news. When we think about what we're hearing and what we're seeing, to know that there is good news. There is the gospel of Christ. That there is an answer to the evil and the sin that we see. That there is an answer to the suffering that we see. That there is an answer to death. That there is eternal life offered through Christ. That Christ died for our sins. That he has the power through his redemptive love to forgive. To bring grace and justice together in the same place in the cross. That if we will acquiesce and if that we will hear his word, the inspired word, for all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. We are carrying the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It is that spiritual dynamite that transforms life. We can't forget that mission. Someone once said that the church is the only institution that stands for those who are outside of it, who works for those who are outside of it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be condemned. Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The gospel. That God loves humanity. I charge this church to continue those efforts in preaching the gospel of Jesus. I also want to encourage the church to do as it's always done, and that is to focus on the weightier matters of the law. It's so tempting sometimes as religious people and as folks with good intentions to begin to get into the minutia of Scripture and to lose our perspective. And we saw that happen to the Jewish people of Jesus' day, especially the Pharisees, that 
They forgot about love, mercy, and justice. And so I want to encourage the church to continue to put an emphasis on the things that matter most, the essential things of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, that plea of unity that Paul has for one Lord, for one Spirit, for one body, for one baptism, for one faith, for one Father, to please Hold to those things which matter most. And don't let those things which matter most suffer for those things which matter least. And to strive for humility and unity. The gospel and the things that matter most. And also I want to encourage the church to be the church to be a fellowship of believers who love one another, who care about one another, who even offer a level of accountability to one another, continuing in fellowship and in breaking of bread and the apostles' doctrine. It's so important to have that special bond of unity in the church being able to, to make up for each other's strengths and differences. It's a wonderful thing to be a part of the body of Christ. And that God doesn't call us to independence. He calls us to dependence on Him and interdependence with one another. And we are the body of Christ. We are each a part of each other. And that we are to treat each other with dignity and love and respect. I just wanted to encourage you in those matters. Because I see a bright, bright future for the Lindsley Avenue Church. That if the Lord builds a house, then they who labor will not labor in vain because if we place our work in the hands of God, it will not return void. So therefore, as Paul said, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. I love you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May he bless you with peace. And just remember, I'm only a phone call away. And I'll be praying for you in this church. And one day, we will be united as a church, as a family. And we will be gathered in a place that knows no change, that knows no pain. We will be ushered into the very presence of God himself, the God we serve now. I love you. God bless you.